Praise the Lord, everybody. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. I'm Pastor Davis welcoming you to the Greater St. Paul Church Weekly Bible Study. And it is my privilege and a blessing of the Lord to be able to share with you the rich Word of God. And I'm going to invite you to open your Bibles, find it if you don't have it already. And let's get ready to take our notes follow along in the scriptures and allow the anointing of the Lord to illuminate us and to take us to the place that he have us to go. So with that being said, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we greet you, Lord, tonight with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We thank you, Father, for this privilege to take the gospel, the good news, into all the world proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. Father, tonight we thank you for the opportunity to stand in your stead. Let the anointing of God fall upon these lips of clay, anointing me to speak your word. Use my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my hands, my mind to your glory and to your praise. Under the... Uh, anointing and the commandment of the Lord I bind the powers of darkness I cast them out of our presence and I loose your spirit tonight to have full sway we give you praise and glory now in Jesus name everybody say with me amen amen greetings again to all of our precious saints our friends there in Alabama, Texas, here in Ohio, along with this great metropolitan city of Columbus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now again, I invite you to get your pens and your paper and your Bibles. We're going to take you into the Word of God. and I'm going to serve notice on you. We have some provocative things to say tonight. Provocative. Some things that probably needed to have been said, and uh, some have been silent, but it's time for the church to speak up, stand up, in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. So you know what we do. I'm going to give you our uh, notes for this evening. And... Uh, you follow along with me, if you would, in the name of Jesus, they are there on your screen. And we can even give you our subject tonight, giving you our subject tonight. And uh, it's called Combating the Spirit of Deception. The top subject tonight, Combating the Spirit of Deception. We're going to take our text from 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, Deuteronomy 18, 22. So there on your screen, you have our subject, you have our notes, you have the scriptures that we're going to be using. I'm going to follow those scriptures that you see there uh, pretty much in the order that they are. Actually, I'm going to follow them in the order uh, that I've listed them. And as the Holy Ghost, if, if he feels to inject and lead me to add something to it, we will do so. So with that being said, let us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled at Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay? Now, 
Second scripture, we're going to Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11. These are our foundational scriptures. As you turn there, you'll find these words. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant. Somebody say, I'm not ignorant of his devices. All right, precious hearts, we're going to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 22. You'll find it says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. For the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Reading that again. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. You'll see there in brackets NIV, that's the New International Version, to which I'm going to read that scripture from that translation. If you have a New International Version, you can bring it up on your tablet, on your phone, uh, whatever device you're using. Notice what it says here. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message that the Lord hath not spoken. That prophet hath spoken presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. Amen. My subject tonight, as I said, I make no apologies. It's a very, very, uh, I guess I would say, unsettling study for some. Yes, unsettling for some, but something that's needed to have been taught. And so I volunteer to do it. I've called it Combating the Spirit of Deception. Combating the Spirit of Deception. I want to go back to 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. Follow me back there if you would, saints. Don't mind if I teach tonight. This is Bible study. So that's what we do. Study the Bible. We're going to teach the Bible. There it says, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled at Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Fix your mind and your eyes on the word beguiled. The serpent beguiled it, Eve. Now that word beguiled comes from a Greek word which means to deceive, to seduce, to lead astray. And you know what's interesting to me? That a person who can be recognized and defined as a pathological liar, a snake oil salesman, a race baiter, 
can so easily manipulate so many people into following him. Say that again. It's interesting to me that a person who is a pathological liar, he's been or she's been found to be a pathological liar, a snake oil salesperson, a race baiter, can so easily manipulate so many people into following him and her. The sad part is that many in the household of faith are promoting his agenda and seeking his elevation, his promotion. The natural question to me is, that follows, how does that happen in the first place? That, that natural question to me is, how does this happen in the first place? Are people that gullible? Are people that so easily led that a person can tell them an out-and-out -out lie and repeat it, and yet they extol his or her virtues? That's puzzling to me. So when a question like this arises or comes to the forefront, I like to look in the book. I like to look in the Bible for answers. So with that, let's go to the book. Let's go to James chapter 3 and verse 16. James chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Wow. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. This verse says to me, this type of environment is an environment that has an evil spirit at its roots. There's something evil. There, there, there's some kind of spirit that uh, envelops itself and surrounds itself with confusion and every evil works. A domineering spirit uh, they say in some circles they call it a Jezebel spirit. It's a controlling spirit. Some people like to control you. They want to. They want to have you under their thumb. And I think we can uh, testify to that uh, in these last days. And we've seen it repeatedly, where a person wants to dominate, and everybody bows down, almost like. Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. There's something spiritual, something evil right there. And I submit to you, James 3 and 16 tells us where there's confusion and strife, there is every evil work. All right, let's go a little deeper. I told you this is, this is a uh, this this isn't a message tonight, a study tonight for the week in 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 heart, timid. It's about time that the church takes the forefront. We're going to get there too. Praise God. The Bible tells us that in the last days there would be certain signs. There are there are many various scriptures that talk about. In the last days, there would be signs that would be pointing to the coming of the Lord. I'm going to take you to Second Thessalonians. You've, you've had time uh, to follow along in in your notes that I've given you. I'll, I'm going to put them back up. Second Thessalonians, chapter two and verses seven through twelve. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Give you time to get there. No rush. And we're going to read verses 7 through 12. Let me put those uh, back up there for you. Maybe someone just tuned in and you can follow along with us again. As I said, I uh, put my notes and references because I don't want to be teaching you something that's just coming off the top of my head. I want you to be able to see and find it in the Bible. Because you remember when we uh, read in Deuteronomy 18 and 22 about false prophets, people speaking things and, and said God said it, and God told them, and this, that, and the other. Well, he told you what to look for. All right, Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse number 7. Watch this closely, saints. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and that shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, watch this, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth, they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. It's right there in your Bible. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believeth not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's the book. What are we talking about? We're talking about combating the spirit of deception. So in these last days, the Word of God said that there will be deceiving spirits loose, lying spirits loose, and people, many, will embrace it, won't say anything. Amen. And so God said for this uh, reason, He would send them a strong delusion that they might believe the lie. Oh, my God. Mm. Can I go deeper? Can I, can, I, can, I, can I just tell the truth? Somebody needs to tell the truth. Somebody needs to stand up in the church and tell the truth. Time out for smooth things. Praise God. Time out for preaching things that make people feel good. At the end of the day, they still lost. Oh my God, help me, Holy Ghost. What, make, what makes matters worse is that those in positions of leadership and influence, where, Harry? In the church. In the church. Are turning their heads and holding their noses at lies and untruths. You heard me. What makes matters worse is that those in positions of leadership and influence in the church are turning their heads, holding their noses at lies and untruths. Where, where, where is the true man of God in these, these so-called leadership churches why aren't they crying loud and sparing not? Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Some people just don't have backbone. They like being on TV. They, they, they like being in offices where national cameras are on them. Amen. And uh, they like it because people in, in positions of leadership can invite them to their office and they can be on a camera. They don't want to offend because they like being seen. 
Wasn't that way with Elijah? Wasn't that way with John the Baptist? John the Baptist told, told Herod it wasn't right for him to have his brother's wife. He lost his head. Amen. It wasn't right for Peter to proclaim uh, in the eyes of those in authority. It wasn't right for him to preach Jesus. But he did and ended up in prison. It wasn't right for Paul to minister to the Jews or to the Gentiles and tell them they didn't have to be circ circumcised. And, and, the, and the, the Presbytery got upset with him. Praise God. So you see... You, 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 if you're going to tell the truth, people are going to get upset. Some people go after your head. Praise God. But somebody's got to stand up and, and cry loud and spare and not. Let's go on deeper. Can we go? Are y'all going with me? Amen. I'm going to have to call the sheriff to get out of my house tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Watch this. This, 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 this is heavy. The Bible says... Don't even be liars and people like that God speed. Yeah, you heard me right. The Bible says, don't even be liars. I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking tonight, folks, on the, uh, a spirit of lying. Don't even be liars and people like that God speed. Come on, somebody. Let's go to Second, Second John. I'm staying in the book. 2 John chapter 1 and verse 11. 2 John, you see you see that? I've got, I went to the uh, trouble of putting the notes there, and you see I'm following right along my script. For he, it says, that biddeth him God's speed, come on, is a partaker of his evil deeds. So when you, you, you bid liars and, and race baiters and people like that God speed, the Bible says you're, you are likened to a partaker of their evil deeds. Let's look at this. Y'all got me going now. We're we, we going somewhere. Let's, let's look in this, if you have an, a message translation. Let's look at this in the message translation. So where am I at? The second, second John, chapter one, verse eleven. In the Message Bible, it says that would just give him a platform to perpetuate his evil ways, making you his partner. Oh my God! So when 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 you bid liars. And people like that God speed and you, you promote them and you bless them and you, and you hold them up and you know, all this, that, and the other. The Bible says you make yourself a partaker of their evil deeds. You look at as being in, in, in sync with them, under the yoke with them. Oh God, help us Holy Ghost. Let's look at this in the Phillips translation. Some of you, that's an, an older translation not many people have, but uh, if you have the Phillips translation, I'm going to quote to you that verse from the Phillips Bible. It says, Don't even wish him God's speed unless you want to share in the evil that he is doing. My God. Don't even bid him God's speed or goodwill unless you want to share in the evil that he is doing. So, to me, when you, you see a, a person lying, person doing wrong, and yet the presbytery, ministry, many get right behind them and promote them. I didn't say it. The Bible says, you become a share in the evil deed that that person is doing. Oh, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. You can't eat, church, at everybody's table and not get heartburn and indigestion. You just can't do it. What am I talking about? You, 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 can't, you can't just take 
the word uh, that you hear coming over the pulpit from many of these 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 churches, I call them churches, and these pastors who are supposed to be on high platforms, Amen. You can't you just can't take everything that they say as gospel. The Bible says we need to become Bereans. You know, in the book of Acts, what did the Berean people do? The saints at Berea do? They checked the preaching of Paul to see if those things which he said were true. You gotta, you gotta, you got to, you just can't take everything in, church. No wonder we, no wonder the church is confused and people are, are messed up. Because there's, there's all kinds of stuff coming over and out of the mouths of, of those who are supposed to be in leadership. Amen. I like the, the uh, uh, series that uh, Dr. Fred Price did years and years ago. Talked about racism in the church. Racism in the church. The last place racism ought to be in the church. The Bible tells me, and going a little deeper, praise God. The Bible tells me that God hates liars. Underscore that. God hates liars. I start off talking to you about a person who, who, who's been described as a pathological liar. A snake oil salesman. A race baiter. You know, pathological liars, that's a person who, who, who almost rather lie than tell the truth. They lie so much that they even believe what they're saying is a lie. No, it is a lie. They, they say it so much they, they, it becomes to them truth. That's a pathological liar. Let me see. Let me show you what, how God feels about them. Amen. I know somebody said, man, I never heard pastor teach like this. Well, this is 2020. Everything's different. Praise God. Let's go to Proverbs. Show you, look how, I'm going to show you how God feels about liars. Proverbs. Proverbs. The writings of Solomon. Proverbs chapter 6 and verses 16 and 17. There on your screen. See it right there. Notice what it says. These six things doth the Lord love. Oh, oh no, hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Now he's going to tell you seven things that God says are an abomination to him. So number one, a proud look. A lying tongue. Lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to evil. Notice the second of the seven abominable things that God hates a lying tongue. Well, we start off talking about pathological liars. God, to them, in, in his sight, a lying tongue, a liar is an abomination to God. Why? Go back to the book of Genesis. Go back to the third chapter and you see the father of lies at work. Now you can understand why God hates liars. Because it ruined his relationship. It ruined the relationship that he had with his, the first two of his creation. God hates lying. Praise God. If, you, if you've told a lie, you need to repent. Quickly. Amen. Some people, they, they get so hardened and lie. I'm talking about even in church. They lie so much that they, they, don't, even, they don't even recognize they lie. They, they, they got a doctorate in lying. Amen. But God said he hates that spirit. A lying spirit. Get rid of it. Amen. Because God said he hates it. It's an abomination to him. Let's go on a little deeper. Praise God. We're just getting warmed up. Revelation. Chapter 21, verses 7 and 8. Revelation 21. Now we're going to see where liars end up. Yes, where liars end up. 
again tonight, I'm, I'm talking about some things that most churches and most pulpits don't talk about. Why? Because it upsets people. Get some, get some agitated. Man, if they get agitated, well, that that mess up the offering. Got to pay that mortgage. Got to pay that gas. Got to pay the, that rent. Come on, somebody. Amen. So some people in the church don't want to talk about this stuff. Oh, well. Revelation 21 and 7, it says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Watch verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving. That's a, that's a, that's a, this is a crowd right here. And the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and saucers and idolaters. Oh, what's next? And all liars. Where are they going? shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. What about all liars? God said they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. All liars. Didn't say some. Didn't say all the black liars, but not the gray liars. Uh, the white liars, they, they, they get a break. They get a pass. No, he said all liars. Oh, that's some deep stuff, church. God hates liars. God hates liars. Amen. So we, we're in the church, we're combating the spirit of deception because lying least it, the, the, it, its foundation is to deceive you. They tell you a lie because they're deceiving you. So we're, com we're coming against that spirit. I'm teaching tonight against that spirit. Trying to warn you tonight, amen, there's a spirit of deception loose in the earth. And it's getting worse. And the body of Christ is going to have to get its act together. Get on its knees. Get in the face of God. So you can combat the spirit. Don't be like many. Acquiescing to it. Don't be like many. Making excuses for it. Oh, you know. We, we, we want we an want a, a, a embassy in Jerusalem. We, 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 want, we want to stop all the killing the babies. I'm, be, I'm for that. We, we want to get conservative judges on the Supreme Court and the Appeals Court. I'm for that. Amen. But I'm also for my brothers and sisters, amen, who are being shot, killed, uh, un unrighteously. Amen. Somebody needs us. We, we, we stand up for the babies, unborn babies, and, and for embassies. Let's stand up for some of these young black men who are being slaughtered. Oh, yeah, you heard me right. Amen. Well, this, this is Bible class. Amen. So the spirit of deception. We, we, we're, we're going to, somebody in the church is going to have to stand up, cry loud, and spare not. I raised my hand. Praise God. Things have gotten so bad that many believers can't tell truthful preachers from charlatans and false prophets. I'm going to say that again. Things have gotten so bad that many church folk, they can't tell the truth from charlatans and false prophets, money grabbers. Amen. Just because somebody can hoop, they can tear the walls down preaching, Oh, oh my God, what a preacher. Oh my God, that man, that woman can preach. Preach what? At the end of the day, what did you get? Leave church, what did he preach on? Oh, I don't know. Man, but my, I can't, my, not, he made, not my, my wig sideways. My socks, I had to pull my socks up several times during that sermon. Praise God, okay, so what? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? 
and lose your soul. You need to be able to tell, to discern between a faithful and truthful preacher of God from some of these, praise God, I call them charlatans. I'm going to take you to the book. I'm still in the book, church. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I've got it up there on the screen for you. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. Verses 22 and 23. Now here, here Jesus is talking about some of these people. They, they, you know, just because somebody cast out a, a spirit and, and, and did certain things and, you know, oh, that, that's a great woman of God. That's a, a powerful woman of God. Let me tell you what Jesus said about them. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied or preached in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works and Jesus and and Jesus said I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity notice what Jesus said Lord haven't we done many wonderful works in your name we prophesied in your name we cast out devils in your name Jesus said, I'll tell them, I don't even know who you are. My God. Jesus said, I won't, I will tell them, I don't even know them. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The Lord's going to cast them out of his sight. But they were, they were casting out demons. They were doing many wonderful works. Saints of God, you better ask God to give you a discerning spirit. You better ask God to give you a discerning spirit because there's a lot of false prophets out here. and We in the body of Christ need a discerning spirit so we can combat the spirit of deception that is rampant in the earth. And praise God, sorry to say, even in the church. Let's go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Praise God, I trust you've gotten there. Here it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring up on themselves swift destruction. Oh, watch this. This is sad. And many, didn't say some or few, it says many shall follow their pernicious ways. Pernicious means evil. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And I think you can <laughs> say amen to that. When you think about <laughs> during this past year, especially during this election cycle, some of the things that have been said from some of these under over these pulpits and some of these preachers, some of the things that have been said, amen. And now people on the outside looking at that. And saying if that's what God is about and that's what church is about, I don't want none of it. That's why he said, Of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. People don't even want to be part of the church because some of the junk that's taken place. Well, I know this is tight, but it's right. Yeah, this, this, this greater St. Paul, you turned into the right place. Pastor David said, man, I never heard him teach like this. Never heard him preach like this. Hey, this is 2020. Everything's different. Coming out, coming out. The new bag. All right, let's go on. Praise God. The straight jacket's coming off. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 1. 
Turn there, First John, chapter 4, verse number 1. Y'all doing okay? Everybody feeling okay? Praise God. I know it's, it's tight, but it's right. Amen. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Let's mean put them to the test. Whether they have, are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. A lot of false prophets out here, saints of God. A lot of false prophets. Tragic. One, one, one notable uh, preacher, and I'll call, you know, I'm not going to call his name, praise God. Uh, mega church. Mega church. Found him dead in a hotel room overdosed. The story came out that that wasn't the first time. But everybody was extolling his virtues. Praise God. Amen. We, we, we better, I'm telling you, we need a discerning spirit because many false prophets are in the world. In the world. Spreading deception. So we're getting, tonight, we're getting our armor on. We're getting the, the, the word of knowledge to combat the spirits of deception. Let me go to another one, the last one here tonight. This, this, this one here, this, this puts the cherry on the ice cream, so to speak. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And verse 22. Boy, this one right here. If, if, if none, none of these scriptures stick in your mind, remember this one, church. Remember this one. Because uh, I heard one person, praise God, calling angels from Africa and in other places. Praise God. Calling for angels from Africa. Somebody said and people over there, uh, they, were, they were called a asshole nation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were, they, that, that continent, uh, they, they, they had a very negative thing to say about them. But now we, we call them for angels from over there. Oh, help us, Lord Jesus. Deuteronomy 18.22. Watch this. Here it is. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. We read that again. When a prophet speaketh, so, so, so called speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. That prophet, that preacher, that evangelist, hath spoken it presumptuously. He said, don't even be afraid of them, don't even pay attention to them. They spoke it out of their own gut. I want to read that from the Amplified, Amplified Bible. Open your Amplified Bibles. Amplified. That's what that AMP is there for. That's Amplified. It says, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or prove true, that is a word which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet, the preacher, the evangelist has spoken it presumptuously. So don't even be afraid of them. Don't even pay no attention to them. And that, that's, that's a sign, church, of the times in which we live. Oh, the Lord, Lord told me to tell you. The Lord told me to say this, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. How come it didn't come to pass? God don't make a mistake. God doesn't make a mistake. If he told you something, it's going to come to pass. 
All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go to the message translation. If you got a message translation, it says, If what the prophet, the preacher, the evangelist spoke in God's name doesn't happen, uh, then obviously God wasn't behind it. The prophet made it up. Forget about him. Huh. I'm, that, that's not me. That's the message translation. I'll say it again. If what the prophet spoke in God's name doesn't happen, then obviously God wasn't behind it. Man, there was all kinds of stuff. Ah, COVID, going to be gone in the summer. Y'all remember that? Oh, let the temperature heat up. COVID can't, it can't take the heat. Well, summer come and gone. Came and gone. COVID's killing left and right. Some people were blowing at it. People were doing all kinds of things. Everyone, it'd be gone the next 30 days. <laughs> that was 90 days ago. So, I've learned, praise God, I hear something, and I take it to God, weigh it by the scripture, and I go from there. And some, some, unfortunately, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I've had to depart company with, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, the things that are, are, are being said to God's people. Now, does that mean I don't love them? No, that's not true. That just means that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a step back. I'm going to stay in the book. I'm going to stay in the book. I'm going to stay in the book. And I want you to stay in the book. That's the only way you can combat the spirit of deception. Well, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got something out of the message tonight. Amen. I didn't didn't come trying to tickle you, make you feel good. But the, the Spirit of the Lord dealt with me uh, early this morning, even last evening, thinking about all the things that are going on and being said and in and, and the church and people in authority, high places. And then I look at politics. God knows I don't, I don't even want to look at that. But some of that, uh, it's disheartening. So I, I felt led of the Lord, and Lord, the Holy Spirit gave me scriptures, and this last scripture, uh, that last scripture in Deuteronomy 18.22, I knew it was in the Bible. And I kept looking, I, I knew where I thought it would be, and, and the Holy Spirit helped me to find it, Deuteronomy 18.22. There's a whole lot of prophecies going forth. And God said, God said this, God said that. In actuality, the bottom line, God didn't say nothing. They spoke it presumptuously. Amen. Well, as I said, it's, I trust you got something out of it. I, don't, I make no apologies. Didn't come in to, to make you feel good. Didn't come in tonight to try to, to tickle your, your, your inners. I'm coming in tonight to tell you we got to combat this spirit of deception. People think you're crazy, especially church folk. They think a lot of church folk, we're stupid. Some of these politicians don't even come around to the churches in the hood until it's, till it's uh, voting time. And then after that, don't see them no more for two or four years. Praise God. Combating this spirit of deception. Well, it's offering time, saints, and I pray in the name of Jesus that something has been said tonight to bless you. You got your scriptures. Go back over those. Read them again. Let the Holy Spirit illuminate your mind, teach you what, what I didn't was able to do because of the amount of time that we had. But I, I want you to get send us an offering tonight. Praise God. We've got obligations. We've got bills that need to be paid. Praise God. We're going to pay them. But you can be a blessing to us in helping us to do so in Jesus' name. On your screen 
is our online giving. Amen. In directions for that, uh, you can make a contribution at our website through PayPal, uh, some uh, Zelle, and others through uh, mailing your donations to the Greater St. Paul Church in Columbus, Ohio, address 1602 Woodland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43219. I want to say, as it says there on the screen, thank you for your support. Thank you for your giving. You've been a blessing. You've just been a blessing. And I want to pray over the offering tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those of whose heart you've moved on to give into the kingdom, to give into this great work that you've given me to do. Thank you, Father, for all those who've given. You know who they are, and you know who you moved on who didn't. Bless them in as well in the name of Jesus. They'll come along. They'll get it in Jesus' name. Father, we pray and thank you now and bless you for you are worthy of all, all the praise. Well, as we get ready to go off, saints, on your screen are some instructions concerning our next service. We will be on Sunday, virtually online at 11.30 a.m. with another powerful word from the Lord. And just like tonight, Tuesday at Tuesday at 7.30 p.m., you can go to our website, Greater St. Paul Church, GSP. You might wonder why we put GSP on there. Well, there are, there are other Greater St. Paul churches uh, in the United States, so we distinguish ourselves with the GSP and uh, forward slash media. You can follow us, listen to us on live stream or Facebook or on our new, new YouTube channel, our new YouTube channel under Harry Davis Ministries. Uh, go, go to YouTube and search Harry Davis Ministries and you will see our latest sermons. Amen. You can follow us along there. You need prayer. You have a, a desire, whatever the case may be. Uh, call us 614-253-2272. Again, if you desire prayer, we are a praying church and we'll, I'll pray with you, for you. Call me at 614-253-2272. If no one's there to take um, uh, your call, we have a device that will record your message. We'll contact you in Jesus' name. Well, I want to wish you a blessed week as we go off. May God bless you real good. Heavenly Father, keep them by your mighty power. Dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. For these things and all others we ask in Jesus' name, we say together, Amen.